Good afternoon, um, or in some places, good morning. Uh, we're going to go ahead and begin the webinar. I anticipate it will last approximately 30 minutes. Uh, everyone will be muted on the webinar, um, and that's just to reduce any background noise. Uh, I know many of you are potentially multitasking, uh, so um, everybody will be muted. But if you have any questions or comments as we continue on, please place them in the comments section or the chat panel or the Q&A panel. Um, I'll be sure to check those as we go through the webinar periodically. I do wanna make sure that everyone can hear me. So can somebody just drop in the chat that my audio is coming through loud and clear? That would be very helpful. I hear you. All right, thanks, Jamie. So let's rock and roll. My name is Katherine Vaughn, and I am a former classroom teacher from Charleston, South Carolina. I've spent the past 14 years uh, working in the ed tech industry, providing professional development to teachers, um, particularly with technology integration in the classroom. I am currently a customer success manager at Vivi, and Vivi is a classroom engagement solution. Um, I do spend a lot of time delivering professional development virtually in this, in this setup right here. So um, I noticed that a lot of teachers have been asking about um, wanting to connect virtually with their students. Um, and there's a lot of easy ways to do that. So I thought I'd lend um, some of my favorite tips and tricks and share those with you um, to see if we can uh, all work together here and, and get in touch with the students that we, uh, we would like to keep stay connected with. So the first thing that I want to do is um, tell you the difference between e-learning vir versus vir virtual meetings. So our webinar today is going to focus on virtual meetings. And especially now more than ever, we're hearing um, these different terms floating about. And so I just wanted to clarify that e-learning, also known as dis distance learning, is where students are receiving instruction via the internet, electronic devices, applications, and digital media kind of outside of the traditional classroom. So that's e-learning. And that looks very different. Um, it, can, it can be a compilation of different tools, devices, strategies. Virtual meetings are just one of the tools that can help with e-learning. And so today we're gonna focus on virtual meetings just to connect via audio and video with our students. And it might not just be our students. Um, I know a lot of teachers who are connecting with other teachers virtually during this time, connecting with family members during this time. We're gonna focus on getting in touch with our students virtually, but um, this really works for anyone who wants to connect via audio and video virtually. So the goal of this session is pretty simple. I just wanna share practical suggestions for hosting a successful, successful virtual meeting with your students. So why would you host a virtual meeting or a, a virtual class meetup? Um, and a lot of teachers have said, I'm gonna miss my students. Uh, I'd, I'd love to, to see them and check in on them. Some teachers are worried um, because schools are safe places for so many of our students. Um, students come to school and receive love and, and um, assistance and support. And so we don't want that to go away just because we're physically separated. So virtual meetings could be used just to connect with an individual student. So potentially a student you're worried about, or maybe a student who needs some extra instruction. I know a lot of teachers, actually a lot of famous children's authors right now who are using um, virtual meetings to share a read aloud with their students. Um, I think that's a great way to connect. Um, some teachers are meeting with students to provide instruction. Um, so I took a snapshot here from um, one of my favorite schools in Raleigh, North Carolina, Cardinal Gibbons. Uh, it's a high school and they are using um, various applications to connect with their students during this time. And you can see that um, they're providing instruction in some cases or in some cases just meeting in with the students um, to see how they're doing. Uh, and that's really important during this time. It's, it's not all about instruction. And um, I'm preaching to the choir because obviously you know that as teachers. So 
it doesn't have to be instructionally based. It could just be like, hey, how are you doing? Tell me what you're up to these days. Um, really just to, to get a, a feel for how students are doing and kind of that social, emotional check, check in with them since we can't be with them physically. So there are a lot of applications out there that, that you can use for virtual meetings. I am using Zoom right now. And technically what I'm doing with you right now is actually not quite a virtual meeting. I'm using a webinar function and I use that for, um, for large audiences um, and large groups. So I am using Zoom, I'm using the webinar feature, but uh, Zoom does have just a meeting feature, a virtual meeting feature. Um, Zoom actually always offers free accounts, um, but typically they have a 40 minute time limit on how long you can host a virtual meeting with their free account. And they have lifted that for K-12 schools during this time frame. So um, all you have to do is you go to the Zoom account and you can click on the school verification form and they will extend that 40 minute time limit to meetings. Um, obviously, if you're just checking in with students, it may just take 15 minutes, so that's not an issue. But you can absolutely um, go to Zoom and fill out, oh, isn't that lovely, uh, technology. Just go to Zoom and you can, there's that school verification form coming up right there. And so all you have to do is sign up for a free basic account and then fill out the information for your school and they will remove that 40 minute time limit right now. So um, I am using Zoom. It is actually what I use here at Vivi. Um, pretty well versed, not an expert, uh, not an expert on anything, but I'm pretty well versed in using Zoom. I have also used WebEx, which is another uh, virtual meeting application. GoToMeeting is another one. I've used both of those in the past. Google Hangouts and Google Meet are great virtual meeting applications. So many people, so many schools and districts are already Google um, users. So therefore, um, Google Hangouts and Google Meet are um, already part of what you have. Uh, so we've got, there are a lot of folks out there right now using Google Hangouts and Google Meet. Um, I, for work, use Zoom. So I don't use Google Hangouts and Google Meet as much as some, um, but it is very easy to use. In fact, I'll jump out and show you in just a second. I did want to mention Microsoft Teams is another one. So if your um, school or district uh, is a big Microsoft user and they have Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Teams is just another application. I am going to present to you from Zoom, but I'm not, uh, but just know that these functions um, that I'm going to show you really pretty much apply to all of the applications out there in some way, shape, or form. I'm going to jump out and show you Google um, Hangouts real quick. The difference between Google Hangouts and Google Meet, um, a lot of schools and districts may have enabled Google Meet. So if you are um, a Google Classroom school district, they may have activated Google Meet. Google Meet is very similar to Google Hangouts. It has some additional functionalities built in. Um, so you might just need to check with your school or district to see if you have Google Meet enabled in your, in your district. Google Hangouts is available to anybody with a Google account. I am going to bounce out to my Google account real quick and just show you how easy it is to use Google Meet. So I am in my Google account. And a lot of times people say, okay, I've got Google open, but where is Google Hangouts? It is in um, this little menu right here. So it's a three by three. And if you don't see it right away, just scroll down. It will be on that list of, of Google applications. And you can move these around. So um, if I wanted Google Hangouts up here, you could just drag and drop. Um, I don't know if you knew about that, but it's very helpful. <laughs> uh, I drag and drop things all the time. So you can um, just scroll down and you'll find Google Hangouts and then just click on Google Hangouts. And it is literally as simple as selecting video call. And you can copy the link to share. So if you want to invite students, you just have to copy that link. It'll automatically copy to your clipboard. And then when you send an email or um, you put it in Google Classroom, just paste that link in there and they can join your call. So I just copied the link to share. 
And so, ooh, my battery's running low. Never a good thing, let me plug in. All right, just make sure if you want your audio video on, you turn your video on, and then you've got, um, I've got multiple meetings on right now, so I'm not gonna be able to do it, but that's your uh, video, that's your audio, and you can mute yourself here. And that's how you start Google Meet. You can also invite people, so you could type in their name or email address, I'm a big fan of just copying the link and sending it out to folks. So that is how you would use um, Google Hangouts. And Google Meet is similar. Um, you just go to meet.google.com. Um, I do not have um, Google Meet, so I can't host via Google Meet, but I could join other Google Meet meetings. Um, again, just check to see if your school or district has it. All right, I'm going to pause there because we've got some questions. Okay, um, our admin has requested we use Google Hangout for any virtual meetings. I would like to do a meeting to touch base with all my kiddos so they can say hi to each other. What is the quickest, easiest way for them, for me to invite them? I would tell you, um, I agree, Google Hangouts is easy. And I would suggest um, all you have to do is click on start a video call and you can email them that link. So copy link to share. You could also invite, since you are a Google uh, district, I believe, you could also invite and then you can um, list their names in there as well. I think those are probably the, I'm a fan of copy link to share and just send it out to everybody. All right, excellent question. Thank you, Jamie. All right, let me check the chat. All right, okay, excellent. So let's take a deeper dive into some of my tips and tricks. Um, again, what I'm doing via Zoom is very similar to what you could do with any of these applications. There are subtle differences, um, but it, very similar tips and tricks to follow. So let's start with preparation. Um, you actually don't need much preparation, and that's the best part. As teachers, you're constantly preparing for things. This is one of those things that you really don't have to put forth much effort um, in, as far as preparation. First thing I'm going to tell you is don't be afraid to Google it. So um, be very specific when you Google something. So I'm not a heavy Google Hangouts user, and therefore um, there's a lot I didn't know about it. Um, Jamie actually asked me a question about whether or not she could record Google Hangouts so she could share that with her students who might not be able to make it live. Um, I had to Google it because I truthfully didn't know the answer. And so be very specific in your Googling. So um, can you record Google? Hangout video calls. The answer uh, for you, Jamie, is that it's not actually built into Google Hangouts. Um, as far as I understand it to be, there's not just a record button um, within Google Hangouts. I'm using Zoom right now, and within Zoom, there is actually a record button where I can record it. But never fear, I Googled it, and this first article I came upon tells me about some workarounds. So there are workarounds to um, recording a Google Hangout call. So uh, don't be afraid to Google it if you don't know the answer. And a lot of times you can find the answer very quickly. Just be real specific in your search. So the answer to you, Jamie, is it's not integrated into Google Hangouts, but there are some workarounds. All right. So that's my first bit of advice. Just don't be afraid to Google it. My next bit of advice is location is important. It's not the end all be all, but it does help if you don't have a super busy background. Um, I'm literally in the corner of a room right now because it's the only um, semi blank wall that I have um, in a quiet location. Now I have to tell you, I have two elementary age children. Uh, and I don't have a huge house. So finding a quiet spot is very hard. So I found this spot in the corner of a room 
that um, I was able to shut the door. And um, I actually put, um, you're going to love this bit of technology, a post-it note with a red X on the door. So my children know, unless it's an emergency, don't come in here. Now I had to define an emergency. I have a first grader and a third grader. Uh, so we had to go through that process because I've had many calls interrupted by them. Um, so we've, we now understand what an emergency is. And when they see the red post-it note X on the door, don't come in um, because I do work remotely. And so uh, it's very common for me to be hosting virtual meetings. So try to find a quiet spot without a bunch of busyness in the background because it does, it does help um, because it focuses on you as the speaker. Um, I had one other thought. Uh, and I can't remember what that thought was, so maybe it'll come to me. So just find, to the best of your ability, find a quiet spot without a busy background. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. If you have any rooms that um, have like high ceilings or just a really open floor plan, I will tell you that from an audio perspective, uh, sometimes it kind of echoes and the audio is not as, as good. So if you can find a room without, that maybe doesn't have an open floor plan and where you can actually close the door, it does help. Um, especially those of you who have children of your own, um, it does uh, help um, the quality of the of the meeting. My other bit of advice is host a practice session. Um, this is important because the first time you do anything, um, it's new, and so you, you're just trying to figure out, okay, what button do I press? And then, uh, you know, does my audio work? Does my video work? I would tell you to host a practice session. Um, I did this session with my own children, and this is my uh, coworker, Jose. Um, I, uh, I made them jump on board with me so I could test a few things out. I am always happy to help. I am an educator. I work in this industry. I'm always happy to help. I'm not an expert, but I'll do my best um, to help you uh, make sure everything's up and running. So you can always email me at katherine at vivi.io. I'll put that up again at the end. Just shoot me an email and if I can jump on, I will absolutely jump on. Um, so definitely try hosting a practice session and definitely make sure your audio and your video are working properly. So that's some of the tips and tricks I would suggest for preparing. And that's really all you have to do. Um, there's no other preparation necessary. I would tell you just have realistic expectations. Because as with anything new, things will go wrong. Um, students will not behave as you expect them to behave. I've included my little practice session with my first grader who insisted on holding things up in front of the camera because it's new to her. And so she was experimenting and playing and goofing off. And so um, just allow, just roll with it. Your teachers, you're used to rolling with that, just roll with it. Don't expect it to be perfect. Some people will have trouble logging on the first time. Um, because it's new to them too. So their audio might not work or their video might not work. Oftentimes I get messages saying, I can't see you or I can't hear you. Um, can you hear me? So just roll with it. Just go with the flow. Um, it won't be perfect the first time. All right, I'm going to pause there and take a quick look to see if any more questions have come in. Um, just pop any questions or comments in the chat. Okay, it doesn't look like any other questions have come in, so we'll keep on moving. So let's talk about audio. Um, in my opinion, audio is probably one of the most important aspects, because if you can't hear, then you'll just see somebody talking. Um, so audio is really important. Um, it's kind of a it's one of my pet peeves uh, when people have uh, bad audio and I, I just can't hear. So um, make sure that your audio is working. So do a test run, make sure your audio is working. One thing that I will warn you is that, um, especially with students, they're not gonna understand mute maybe. So you might have to show them where mute is and how to use mute. And I always set a ground rule that if you're not speaking, please turn, please mute yourself because you will catch background noise. Um, the, the Amazon delivery person knocks on the door and the dog starts barking in the background. That kind of stuff happens. 
um, but it can be very disruptive to everyone who's participating. So you're probably gonna have to teach them and that's fine. On that first go round, explain to them why mute's important. It's kind of like raising your hand in the classroom. We can't all talk at once and that there's background noises that you're probably not even aware of. So if you're not speaking, put yourself on mute. In Zoom, um, there's a little mute button in the, in the corner and it looks like a microphone. Um, actually, in Google Hangouts, it looks the same. Let me just double check. So Hangouts, yep, video call. And it's a little it's a little microphone and when you click on that microphone it'll put a line across it that means you're muted when you don't see the line across it you're unmuted um, same with video when you see the line across it that means your video is not on when the lines um, not on it then you've got it it's uh, just so you know it's not letting me use my video because I'm using my video for zoom right now so that's an important lesson, and I would I would make that one of the first lessons you teach your students when you host your first meeting is teach them how to use mute. Um, I will say that some applications allow the host to mute participants. So I've been on calls where somebody just forgot to mute themselves, and there was uh, a siren in the background. Um, so not that they were in the middle of an emergency, but you get the idea. Um, we could hear it and it was disruptive to the meeting. So within Zoom, there is a way to manage participants and mute all. Um, it sounds kind of harsh, but it really does help everyone here. Um, so again, just like raising your hand and speaking one at a time. Headsets are helpful, uh, not necessary, um, because you can use the audio on your device. So. Um, you can use your phone to host any of these meetings. I mean, they're all just web applications. You can use your computer, you can use an iPad, you can use a Chromebook, whatever device you're using. They all have built-in microphones, so you could just use that microphone. Um, I spend a lot of time on virtual meetings, so I have um, earbuds, or earpods, excuse me, and I do love them. Um, I uh, wear them all the time. So I do like them. I like the fact that there's no cord, um, but you could also use, um, you know, any sort of headphones that you have. Um, it doesn't have to be fancy, um, but I do like them because it, uh, it helps the participants hear me, but it also allows me to be really hands-free um, and not worry about anything. So I am a, a big proponent of using a headset. Just make sure the headset you're using has a microphone and audio. So ear pods do, earbuds do, uh, but like my students have headphones just for their iPad. Those don't actually have a microphone on them. So just make sure whatever you're using also has a microphone. Okay, I think I might've seen a question come in. So let me pause right here and check. Oh. We have someone from New Zealand joining us. Yay! Um, thank you. Good morning. Awesome. It is, uh, it's early there, um, but thank you for joining. That's awesome. I love teachers. Y'all are so dedicated. All right, video. Let's talk a bit about video. Um, really the point of these calls, especially if you're just meeting up with your students, just to see how they're doing, Turn the video on. You want to see them. Share a smile with them. Um, you want to see their smile. Their smile makes you feel better. It, it makes you feel better when you can see somebody. The other thing is I am very animated with my facial expressions and my body language, as you probably deduced. Um, it really does make it more a more human connection. Nonverbal communication is a big deal. Um, and so this image right here, these are my coworkers. Um, we're across the United States. Uh, I do have a lot of co coworkers actually over in Australia as well. Um, but these are my coworkers, and you can see somebody said something funny because Nate right here is laughing. Um, and so it just makes such a difference to have that video um, as well as the audio. So if you've got the video and you can turn it on, turn it on. Um, I have had conference calls with people who were driving. Uh, they weren't looking at the phone. They just turned it on and set it on their dashboard and just kept driving. 
Um, but it just makes all the difference in the world to be able to see somebody. Not that I would necessarily recommend driving and having a conference call, but we could see him just driving his car and he was looking forward and paying attention. So um, turn that video on if you have it. The other thing you can do is with a lot of these applications, you can share your screen, which is actually what I'm doing right now. So I'm sharing content with you, but you could still see me. So you see the content and you see me. Um, and so with a lot of these applications, they allow you to share your screen. And so you can show the students content and then they will still be able to see you and you can see them. So um, if you have content to share, absolutely do that. If you just need to show your students how to navigate a website, there's been a lot of that going on these days, just pull up the website. My kids are, by the way, obsessed with brain pop right now. Um, so just pull up the website, show them how to navigate it. Um, whatever content you have that you want to share, you can pull up. If it's, let's just say it's a PowerPoint, you can pull up a PowerPoint and you can use this as a discussion point. Okay, so who can identify the geometric shapes in this cityscape? Um, any kind of content you have, uh, just hit share your screen and you can pull it up, but they'll still be able to see you, which is really um, a nice feature. So you can do both of those. Chat, um, almost all of these applications, in fact, I do believe all of them have a chat feature. So this is really gonna be dependent on potentially the age of your students. Uh, if you have really young students, I might not recommend heavily relying on the chat. If you're just meeting with an individual student, or if you're just meeting with a few students, you might not need to use the chat, but if you have 20 students on your virtual meeting, it might be easier to put questions in the chat um, or allow them to respond in the chat, similar to what I'm doing. So I can check the chat here and I just read it out loud. Um, I always, you know, try to say, hey, thanks, Jamie, um, for, for the, the question. So I, you can always say, okay, Emma, you're, you have a great question. Let's talk about that. Um, if you're doing a read aloud with your students, which is, we're seeing a lot of this, go ahead and pull that book up read it and pose a question in the chat panel say you know what's the genre um who's your favorite character what's the main character what's the conflict and just let them respond again that's going to be age dependent the older the students the more they actually like the chat feature um and the more capable they are to handle that um, but don't be afraid to use that chat feature um, i know that we have a lot of folks who are interested in using google hangouts so um, when you start a call within Google Hangouts, there is a chat feature. It's actually right off here to the side. And you just type in your message. And then they can respond and you'll just see those little bubbles popping up. So, you know, what's the main character or what's the answer to this equation or how are you doing? How are you feeling? Um, use one word to describe how you feel right now. Um, simple questions, uh, but they can go a long way. So again, I suggest using the chat feature. This is a screenshot of Zoom. Within Zoom, I can see um, whoever is sharing via video, but I can also see the group chat along the side. One thing I would tell you to do, um, you can send individual messages to attendees, to meeting attendees, or you can send it to everyone. So um, different applications handle that a little bit differently, but just make sure if it's a question you wanna pose to all of the students who are attending, that you send it to everyone. But you could also send almost like a direct message to a specific student if you wanted to as well. So just keep that in mind when you're using the chat feature. Last but not least, make it fun. Um, I, again, your teachers, you understand that um, learning can be so much fun. So can virtual meetings. Um, personally, I love them. One thing you can do is you can add a virtual background. So a lot of applications do have the ability to add virtual backgrounds. Um, not all of them, but some of them. Zoom does. And you can actually add your own in there. So I'm going to minimize this for a second. 
and I'm going to um, go to choose a virtual background. So Zoom does have a virtual background option. So this is the one I used yesterday. I'm in outer space. And so now I'm in outer space. The other thing that you can do, um, this is one of my favorites. Let me choose a different one. This is actually where I'd like to be right now. Um, so you can be on a beach. Um, you can have a weather map behind you, um, you know, kind of like Al Roker on the Today Show. Uh, you can, I've seen some people put um, Harry Potter images in the background. Um, if you're studying landforms or um, habitat or geography, you could put a, the tundra behind you and have the students guess where I am, kind of like where in the, where's Waldo or where in the world is Carmen San Diego? You know, where's Mrs. Vaughn? Um, today I'm on a beach. Uh, which would be absolutely lovely. So you can um, have a little bit of fun with it and, and add that virtual background. Um, I think I'll stay on the beach if that's okay with you. Uh, it's not a, not a bad place to be right now. So that's one way to make it fun. The other thing I would tell you is don't be a statue. You see how much I move. Now, I'm not moving off the camera because that would be a bit distracting, but it's okay to smile, to laugh, to use hand gestures. Um, I like to use props. So this is one of my favorite props. I've done this to my coworkers before because it, they're a bunch of guys with mustaches. So I just put on a mustache. The kids think it's hilarious. My adults think it's hilarious because I just show up on this virtual meeting wearing a mustache. So it's okay to use props. Um, reading books, just read a book just like you would in the classroom. Open it up, that special teacher reading stance. Uh, now, I will say if you're using a virtual background, this is where it can get tricky. So let me take that virtual background off. I'm actually glad that happened so you can see. Um, virtual backgrounds are fun, but if you are trying to show content, it's probably best not to use them. There we go. So yeah, just hold that book open, read it like you normally would. Um, it's okay to move around. And I'm gonna take my mustache off now. All right. Next bit of advice, trust your instinct. Um, it has been amazing to see how teachers have handled um, these crazy times and these challenges with such grace and poise. Your instinct is spot on, trust yourself. Um, you approach a virtual meeting just as you would approach um, anything in your classroom. So you're a teacher, you know what you're doing and trust that um, and, and keep rocking on with that. Um, it's just, it's a different format, but it's okay. And with that, um, I'm going to open it up to some questions. I promised you 30 minutes. I'm a few minutes over. So I just want to open up the floor to any questions you might have. Um, and just want to mention that I am absolutely a resource for you. Um, I will help you uh, manage um, any of these meeting things that you might find tricky or help you figure it out or just be there to practice with you. So. Um, feel free to absolutely reach out to me with any questions. Um, and if I can't find the answer, I sure know a bunch of teachers who um, who do know uh, a lot about virtual meetings and who do use virtual meetings or e-learning. So um, right now, I'm just here for you. So let me know how I can help. I did see a question come in. All right. Um, I'm glad y'all have found this helpful. Uh, that was my goal. The virtual background is a ton of fun. Um, yeah, and you can, again, you can bring in your own content. So I'm glad you mentioned the virtual background. So let's say that um, I needed, let's say we're studying habitats or ecosystems and I need an image of the tundra. Okay, that didn't work. Ah, that would be the truck. So let's do tundra biome. <laughs> it's actually pretty funny. So I can save this image um, to my desktop. And so I choose virtual background. I can actually add any images. So I'm going to add my tundra. And now I'm in the tundra. So you could totally do a where in the world 
is Mrs. Vaughn today. Um, actually, that's lovely. I'm glad, I, I'm glad I did that one. So yeah, the virtual backgrounds are really fun. Again, I can't promise you that all video me, meeting, virtual meeting applications have that ability. Zoom definitely does, um, and Zoom is free. So, um, you know, again, it's, it's a great way, and the kids love it. Um, so let me see. I've had another question come in. Bringing up content, can I bring up a Google Doc or Word document? Absolutely, always. So um, I am, right now, I am sharing my screen. So you can still see me, but you see my PowerPoint in the background. I'm just going to minimize that. So if you have a Google Doc, so I have one right here about comparing planets, you just bring it up. And actually, if it's shared with your student, collaborate on this at the same time. So I've got this live. If it's been shared with your student, then, you know, I can have, I can even assign, okay, Um, you know, Emma has Mercury, Will has Venus, Jamie has Earth, and so we absolutely bring up anything, Google Docs, Google Slides, anything, um, anything you need to bring up, absolutely. And that's the beauty of this is, so if you're, if you want to do some instruction or, or need to share something with your students, just bring it up um, and they will be able to see it. All right. Let's see if there's any more questions that have come in. All right, and you can see now, I mean, you're, you're using chat. Chat is extremely helpful. Um, I always just repeat the questions out loud, uh, so everybody's on the same page. All right, folks, so I did wanna mention um, before we leave that um, we do have a Facebook group called the Education Exchange, and it is specifically for educators by educators. Um, and it has been an amazing resource just to learn what others are doing, especially now. Um, that's where I learned about the children's author Mo Willems was doing a live stream every day, uh, Doodles with Mo or Lunchtime Doodles with Mo. I learned about that from the Education Exchange. It's really just a place to share thoughts and ideas. Um, I believe quite a few of you are already members, but um, we're always looking for members. We're trying to grow that community. Um, it's a lovely community of teachers supporting teachers and sharing ideas. So uh, if you're a Facebook user, just uh, look for the Education Exchange and um, request to become a member, and we'd, we'd love to have you. And the other thing is I just want to share my contact information. Um, I am happy to help with anything. Uh, it's Catherine at Vivi.io. Uh, just make sure you spell Catherine properly. Um, and then you can follow us on Twitter. You can follow us on Facebook at Vivi Education. And with that, I thank you so much, um, not for just joining today, but for being a teacher and putting uh, our children first. Uh, it is greatly appreciated always, but especially during this time. So um, if I could be of any assistance, please let me know. And thank you for all that you do. Have a great day. Bye.